Hey guys, welcome back to part two of going from lead acid batteries to lithium ion phosphate batteries. Today we do the install. On the last episode, I told you all about these batteries. We talked about the pluses and minuses of going with lithium batteries. And we even did a little bit of a water test with the batteries I have in this boat, just to see what the top speed would be pushing this boat with the trolling motor. In this episode, we're gonna go ahead and put these in, put in the battery chargers, take the whole setup back out to the lake and see how fast we can get it going with that trolling motor. And then we're gonna do a fishing trip and see how long these last, running in and out of saltwater creeks in the Gulf of Mexico. And if this is your first time to the channel, my name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer, and an avid angler. And I love to do videos where I can show anything I've learned, any upgrade I can make to my boat or my fishing gear. These two, these two batteries are connected in series, so they form a 24 volt bank. So there's gonna be one of these wires that is a bridge wire that goes from the negative one battery to the positive of the other. Now this is not a wiring tutorial, so if you don't know how to do this, find a friend who knows something about DC circuits or look it up on the internet. It's really simple. Anyone can do it. Now these two batteries were mismatched because I've been replacing them as they go bad and I almost never buy the same one twice. All right, these are the charger wires. And since I'm gonna replace that charger, I can just push that back. All right, so here's the first challenge. These battery trays are only 12 and like three quarters inch on the inside. And a lithium battery is 13, about 13 and an eighth. So I'm gonna cut the inside lip off those things with the handiest tool on the planet, an oscillating multi-tool. <laughs> So when I first bought this boat, my biggest surprise was the size of this front storage compartment. Well, this thing was built for smugglers, I think. This is a good charger. I'm going to put this in the back of the boat and use it to charge my two house batteries. These are the two battery chargers, which combined have about the same footprint as this beast. All right, I'll just hang the other one on the other side exactly the same way. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and shove the charging wires over to where the batteries are. All right, I really like that the fuses are right here next to the chargers. On the old one, they're over here at the end where the terminals are at the battery. That means you gotta get up into wherever your batteries are and try to get this apart and see if the fuse is bad. That's a bad design, actually. That's the last wire. Piece of cake when it only weighs 22 pounds. Oh man, it hung up on this old piece of hardware. It had me freaked out. I thought, oh my God, it doesn't fit. Well, I'll take that off. <laughs> Had me worried for a second. All right, we're installed. All right, so let's do a smoke test here. I'll turn on the breaker. All right, looks like the trolling motor is happy. All right, let's do a dry test. All right, there it is, powered by lithium. All right, let's plug in the onboard chargers. And we have LEDs flashing. All right, so I downloaded the app for the chargers and the boat is out there and I can monitor each of the batteries independently right on my phone. And you can get charge graph if you're a bit of an egghead like me and you can get a cycle history and you can set up sort of a maintenance history on the batteries in the app. Pretty cool. All right, we're back at the same canal we were when we tested the top speed with the other two batteries. If you haven't seen that, that was the last video on the lithium time batteries. And I'll put a link for it above me. You should check it out. Last time, the wind was blowing down the canal, so we went up and down. But this time, it's actually crossing the canal. So we're just gonna go one shot and see how fast we can go. This is not a scientific test. I just wanna see if there's any difference between the lead acid batteries that I had in there fully charged and these lithium batteries fully charged. There's our speed, that's the depth.
All right, well, it looks like we got a little less speed, a few tenths of a knot. I don't know if that's meaningful at all. We're not gonna mess around with these little tests. We're gonna go ahead and head out to the Gulf of Mexico and spend all day fishing and see how it holds up. Angler, we're out here in the Gulf of Mexico on one of the coldest March mornings ever. But my plan today is to really put those lithium batteries to the test. All right, so we're right here where that black dot is. And my plan is to go ahead and go along this coast all the way over here as it starts to go north and just follow this coastline for the entire day under power only with that trolling motor and then we'll see at the very end how much power we actually have left in those batteries hopefully we'll catch some fish in the meantime too i brought along some of our latest creations i've got the big eel swim bait i brought this sardine bait i just don't give this thing enough water time here's that segmented mullet crankbait and the blood and guts lexan lure the drop and pop rigged with a nice jig and then just for jollies i brought along the bluegill swim bait and this is that walk the dog lure i made sort of an improvement on the spook so for those of you who are new i'll go ahead and put links to the videos of the builds of every lure that i use today all right that was a little disappointing nothing nothing at all on top water but i also brought this little broken back wake bait This is such a light lure, I can't get a good long cast with it, so I'm gonna switch to the sardine. Something just stirring up the bait fish. Oh, maybe it's it's porpoise, but this corner was exploding. Yeah, it looks like it was dolphin. That's not a good sign, because they spook everything. There we go. Oh. All right, I think it's a little red. Pretty little guy though. He looks to be like 16. Hey, he's right at 17, just a little short. All right, we're coming around another point and we're gonna get on this west facing shoreline and head north. It's been really quiet. I haven't gotten a single bite since that redfish. So I've switched to my go-to lure. This is the fat belly chrome with a green top. All right, once we round this point right here, we'll be back on the outside. And hopefully we'll find something. It has been absolutely dead. Surprisingly, very little action, a couple of bumps. But the trolling motor, it's been running the whole time. It's going on two and a half hours. Let's give this point a shot. All right, game on. We've got somebody on here now. Coming right at me. Coming right towards me. Uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, baby. Oh, he's gonna make me run around the boat. He might be oversized. That is a big fish. That is a big one. I've got nothing but 10 pound test on this. Oh my. This is a bull. We're gonna have to wear him out. He's a beast. 29 inches. Let him go. That's the biggest red in a little while. All right, I want to cross this, the mouth of this little bay here, and I don't really want to fish it. It's just kind of muddy flat. So I want to go ahead and troll this, troll it behind the trolling motor and see if we can get up to trolling speed with the motor, even after like two and a half hours of running. looks like about the right speed for the lure well <clears throat> that was like a quarter mile run gave me time to eat my lunch we didn't catch anything but I'm gonna try this area here some nice oyster bars right in here
Probably gonna be too big. <laughs> Give up the fight. This guy hit it so hard. He ran past it and I thought he cut me off. My line went totally slack. <sighs> this thing must be huge. I can't budge him. Not bugging this guy. Shoot! Shoot! I had kept this guy out of the water for a long time, so I wanted to hurry and get him back in. I was a little worried about him. He was definitely in shock. You can see he was just listless, but I knew he was alright. And there he goes. But he kept swimming right back into my net. Finally, he kind of figured it out. He regained his, uh, sense of direction and headed off into the shadows. All right, so they're really loving the fat belly. Something green with a little flash. They're not biting anything else, so I'm gonna stick to it. All right, so we're like two thirds of the way back to where we started, trolling along the edge again and trying to see if I could find something, but the tide has kind of, kind of gone slack and uh, so has the bite. So I'm gonna go all the way back to where we started that, and try to fish around that oyster bar and then from there, I think I'm gonna have to call it. We'll All right, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. We're back where we started off. And I figure we got about five hours of running time on the motor and those batteries. All right, well, the tide went out and we had to come out here to the flats. I'm trying to pick up some trout, but all I've gotten was a ladyfish. So I'm going back to a top water. Sun's getting low and I'm hoping we'll get a top water hit. The last couple of hours of fishing, we're gonna fish the sun down there. Little trout, first one of the day. All right, turns out he's a keeper. Well, we're back. That was a long day yesterday. It was actually 10 hours of fishing. And I didn't get back home till 10 o'clock at night. Everything is the way it was last night. I've got to clean the boat and do a bunch of stuff. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and check on the condition of these batteries. And although I caught some big, some big fish yesterday, that's the only guy I brought home. All right, I'm gonna take the static voltage reading and we got 13.38 volts on the port side and 13.37 on the starboard side. And we use this little simple table of charge voltage to capacity. You can see that at 13.3, 
You guys still got 90% of the battery left. That's nuts. We ran for at least 10 hours yesterday. Now, most of that time was on a very low setting as I was easing along, but we did a couple of long sort of fast sprints and we ended up fighting the wind in the current for an hour or two. So I'm super happy at this. There's no way I would have gotten that kind of time out of my old lead acid batteries. So I could probably go out and do another day just like yesterday with these batteries. All right, so there's really nothing left but to give these things a, a thumbs up. These aren't the fanciest, most sophisticated batteries on the market, but they also are priced at a point where the average guy who just wants a long lasting battery can get into them without spending a fortune. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Sorry we didn't do the question of the week. Too much going on out there. All right, everybody, see you next time.